right, we're halfway through chapter six here. Um, and Hiccup's just said, shut up, fish lazy, saved my life for the second time, didn't he? Said Hiccup. Hermongus looked uncomfortable. The very next day, Hiccup was on the way to his taking money with menaces lesson with fish legs. And Humongous had wandered off a bit further up the, the mountain. I've packed, Fishlegs was arguing. I think we should leave. You heard what Humonga said. That volcano is going to blow any minute. We can't just leave the rest of the tribe here to get exterminated, Hiccup replied anxiously. We have to persuade them somehow to come too. Fishlegs was just answering that there was no way they were going to be able to persuade the hooligans to do anything of the sort because they're all too too silly to understand the peril of the situation when a large boulder mysteriously detached itself from the darkened hillside above. It came crashing down towards Hiccup and it would have squashed him entirely and that would have been the end of Hiccup if he, Hemungus hadn't called out from above at the last minute, look out below! Hiccup and Fishlegs flew, flung themselves to the left and the right and the rock came crashing down in between the two of them. Oh, for Thor's sake, for Thor's sake, for Thor's sake, gasped Fishlegs, sprawled on the ground and looking up at the dust cloud stirred up by the gigantic stone that had nearly killed them both. It's a sign, don't you see? It's a sign from Woden that we really ought to be getting out of here. I'm going to go and check my backing again. Sorry, guys, said Humongous, hurrying down from the mountain above. My foot slipped and I must have knocked off a little bit of rock. Are you all right? Well, we're still three-dimensional, and thank you for asking, replied Fishleg sarcastically. I love his sense of humour. Oh, how I wish I had a nice smart bodyguard all my very own to chuck rocks at me and send me unarmed into one, into one combat with teenage psychopaths. See that perhaps Fishlegs uh, might be right about the signs, however, because all of these misfortunes, one after another, seemed rather foreboding. Only the very next day, after the rock incident, Hiccup was sitting down to a supper of oysters with his father. Humongous the bodyguard was standing to attention behind Hiccup's chair. Toothless was underneath the very same chair, quietly gobbling, gobbling up an entire chicken that he'd nicked from the larder. Stoke had finished his oysters before Hiccup had even started his and was looking at his son's oysters, his mouth watering. His hand reached out for a particularly plump one and Humongous shouted out, Don't eat that oyster! So it looked at Humongous with raw disapproval. Something very odd is going on here. This guy was going too far this time. He got the whole hooligan tribe all decked out with kind of um, with their beards all in all in in ribbons. And now he was trying to tell Stoic what to eat. I shall eat whatever oyster I like, roared Stoic the Vast, bringing the oyster up to his mouth. Humongous reached out and made a grab for the oyster. Stoic the Vast hung on and in fury. There was now an undignified scuffle and Humongous had to swallow the oyster himself to prevent Stoic from eating it. Right, that's it. So <laughs> he swallowed the oyster himself. Right, that's it, boomed Stoic the Vast, rather relieved actually to have hit on an excuse to execute the irritatingly perfect Humongous. That's Humongous having eaten the oyster to stop Stoic from eating it. Bad oyster, very bad oyster. Oh, you know, Sorry, Stoic the Vast said first, you're fired! Humongous finished swallowing. Bad oyster, very bad oyster, he gulped. I could tell just by looking at it. Wow, gasped Hiccup. He just saved your life now, father. He ate the bad oyster that you would have eaten. What a hero. Oh yes, very good, mumbled Stoic, gruffly thinking. Just by look at it, looking at it, who is this maddening superman? <laughs> so he's not fired, is he, father? Said Hiccup anxiously. No, I guess not, said Stoic, thinking. Crosses. <laughs> in fact, perhaps you should give him a medal or something. Are you feeling all right, Humongous? You're looking awfully green. I think perhaps I should just have a little lie down for a moment, you know, said Humongous. And he staggered out of the room, leaning on Hiccup's shoulder with Hiccup chattering all the time. That was so brave, Humongous. And how could you tell it was bad? Is it like mushrooms or something? I do hope you're going to be all right. Stoic pushed the oyster moodily away from him. He had quite lost his appetite. Humongous was thoroughly ill for the next two days, which was just fine as far as Dirk was concerned. Oh, poor old Humongous, he's something very odd is going on. He's sort of being heroic, and I just wonder whether he's behind some of these accidents, though. During this time, all the other tribes began to arrive at the meeting, which the Vikings called the Thing, held to celebrate the Midsummer Festival known as Sun's Day Sunday. The Pog Burglars, the Meatheads, the Peaceables, the Grimbles, the Bashamoids, the Silence and the Glums, the Terramongers and the Frothibis. 
anybody in fact, apart from the outcasts, the rude boys and the lava lout, who were a totally lost cause. Soon Hooligan Harbour was absolutely crammed with Viking ships and the tiny island of Burke was jam-packed with tents of all colours of the rainbow. Market traders had set up shop in the sweltering baking heat, trading shipfuls of stuff from octopus lollipops to counting boogles to open-toed sandals to dragon-skin booties for your Viking baby who has everything. The night before Sunday, 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 Hiccup lay awake in the suffocating warmth for what seemed like ages and ages as floating in through the window came the sounds of the basham works and the bog burglars partying and the shriek and scratch of dragon fights. Down at Hiccup's feet, Toothless lay awake too, his claws stuck in his ears, wriggling and playing, so waffling up in a muffled way from underneath the sheet came the sound of Sweetical, sweetical barbarians, humans, and why is he so selfish? After a while, the bedclothes fell silent, and the only sound of Toothless's presence was a warm little mound at Hiccup's feet that gently rose and fell. I love that. I love it. Imagine having your own little dragon to sleep in your bed. The odd, soft, sleepful murmur of his ridiculous, accompanied by a little indignant smoke ring that crept out from under the sheet. Hiccup watched the smoke rings as they rose up to the ceiling or drifted slowly out the window into the sultry star crammed night and eventually he too fell asleep. He dreamt uneasily of fire and omens and dragons with talons like swords that pursued him through the hot feverish night. In the middle of the night Hiccup woke up with a silent scream and there suddenly beside the bed was the terrible figure of humongously hot shot. Standing over Hiccup like an executioner his two swords raised poised to come down on Hiccup his head in darkness. He was muttering to himself loudly in a voice that was awful to hear. Should I do it? Should I not? Should I do it? Should I not? What are you doing? I'll take up in terror. Bodyguard, stop. What are you doing? Humongous. Humongous. Humongous appeared not to hear him. He went on talking to himself in that awful voice over and over again, something about a promise he had to keep. He was wearing the hood of his far suit rolled down so you couldn't see his face or his eyes, which made him awful still, and the moonlight glittered on the razor-sharp metal of his swords. It was a terrible moment. Humongous, his hands were shaking. He brought them down. He stopped them. I should not, said Humongous with decision. Something shot out of the sheet and bit Humongous heavily on the thigh with sharp, sleepy little gums. Humongous let out a cry of pain and dropped one of his swords on his foot. Sweeticulous, stopped his not toothless, sleep flapping around the room for a bit. Can't, can't a dragon get any sleep round here? You're you so noisy, so selfish, keeping poor Toothless awake all night. Toothless then crashed back into one of the covers and dropped off to sleep again. Hiccup leapt out of bed, grabbing his sword from his scabbard as he did so. Humongous hopped around the room, holding his foot in his thigh. Ow! 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 cried Humongous. The moment had passed. All the fight had gone out of Humongous. He peeled off the hood of his fire suit and now that Hiccup could see him in the moonlight, he didn't look scary anymore. He was still rather green from his illness and he looked very tired. I can't do it, said Humongous. I gave my solemn hero's promise that I would kill you. But I can't do it. It doesn't feel right. So you mean, said Hiccup in astonishment, you're my bodyguard and you've been trying to kill me? That's right, said Humongous. I made a promise. Hiccup gave a slightly hysterical laugh. Sometimes somehow it's very like Stoic to accidentally hire a bodyguard who was supposed to be looking after his son but was in fact trying to kill him. But who did you promise to kill me for? whispered Hiccup. And why? Humongously hot shut side. I see, I will have to tell you my story, he said, and in the quiet, stifling darkness of the night time, for even the bog buggles and the bashamons had fallen asleep by now, and Humongous the bodyguard began to tell his tale. Oh, we'll have to hear the tale of Humongous Lee Hotshot the bodyguard tomorrow. It's going to be interesting. Who, who did he promise to 